here we go again episode 14 of the bad buddhism podcast with your host anthony boyd so just a few updates for you guys the podcast is now on youtube for those of you who have youtube premium and spend most of your time on youtube you can now listen to the podcast on youtube the name of the podcast of course is the bad buddhism podcast that's where you find it on youtube i meant to say i meant to say the name of the youtube channel is the bad buddhism podcast so there's that um of course you can check my website for any and all updates and for all content all of this content is on the badbuddhism.com website um also have an instagram page for the bad buddhism podcast which is at bad buddhism podcast so yeah we making some i guess you can call it strides or what have you i just want to make sure that this podcast and my information is accessible across all channels um so yeah that's pretty much that it's pretty much that make sure you check out my youtube page where i do a lot of the in-depth intellectual work and um yeah that is at anthony boyd that is the youtube channel anthony boyd and um yeah let's get started because i have a very interesting taboo topic that many people will probably agree with me on or disagree with me on um and um actually two topics two topics one is more personal development type stuff and the other one is more of a maybe a cultural or societal perspective on how to raise the next generation right a lot of you that are listening to this are at childbearing age or do have children and this will probably be a touchy subject for you right so let's get into it let's get into it so the first thing i want to talk about is i'm going the first thing i'm going to talk about is the um 80 20 principle right the second thing i'm going to talk about is bullying bullying big topic i have a very strong opinion on bullying and how to stop bullying right and i think a lot of us know intuitively how to stop bullying but anyway we're gonna save that for later if you want you could just skip forward to that part i'll probably put a timestamp in the description so that you can hear it oh also make sure that you subscribe make sure that you like make sure you comment make sure you send voice notes into anchor whichever platform you're listening to um listening to this podcast on make sure that you support the podcast let it grow a little bit more let let these ideas let these ideas penetrate the world you know (laughs) so We're going to get into it real quick with the 80-20 principle because I've spoken about the Kaizen method, with which is pretty much just taking incremental steps in the right direction towards our goals, not rushing too many things, you know, not going too hard to try to do things before it's time. You know, you're just taking incremental steps, step by step. You get better every day, right? Incrementally, you get better at different aspects of your life. And you're not really in a rush. You're not in a, really in a rush. You're chilling, you know. You're not really in a rush. You are just focusing on improving in the most important ways, which leads to big results over the long run, you know. Little steps that add up to big steps, right? So we are going to switch gears and again talk about the 80 20 principle which is a principle that is inherent in many hierarchical structures right or many systems in general in business personal personal life 
uh, technology, um, sports, right? So the main idea of the 20 principle, and I'm going to read it from the book. So there's a book called The 80-20 Principle by Richard Koch. And the, the main idea is this. The 80-20 principle is that 80% of the results in any system will flow from just 20% of the efforts. Therefore, the key to being more productive and better organized is to focus on expanding the productive 20% rather than trying to eliminate the unproductive 80%, right? So we, from that from that little excerpt, we know that 80% of the results in any system will flow from just 20% of the efforts. Boom, right there. That, that's all you really need to know about the 80-20 principle. Many people want to focus on 100% of everything. And that's where a lot of us get hung up into analysis paralysis. We try to analyze the whole system and try to figure the whole game out when all we need to do is just focus on the 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 twenty percent of what's gonna bring us eighty percent of the results, which is over fifty percent, which is almost a hundred percent. I'm Jamaican, so I like to round everything up. Eighty percent is almost a hundred percent. So if you get just 20% of your efforts right and you make that as efficient as possible, 80% of the results is counted for, accounted for. That's lovely. When I found that out, some, what? Let me look at the notes here. Woo! I read this book Friday. The last time I read this book, let me tell you the exact date. Friday, October 28th. 2011 2011 that's the first time i read this book and i've been following it ever since or that's the last time i at least put you know a note marker in it Whoo! and how do i know that so i've been rocking with iphone since pretty much since it came out since that well not pretty much since it came out because i was too broke to get the first iphone i was still coming of age so i couldn't afford to get the iPhone on my own, but I definitely got that iPhone 4, and I've been rocking with it since, and now I have the XR, so those of you who have iPhone, you know, you got, you got the, um, you got the cloud, iCloud, and I have iBooks, and I save like a shit ton of, I have a shit ton of books on i on iBooks, and I have, um, a lot of notes, but let's not get too sidetracked, right? So we know that 80% of the results in any system will flow from just 20% of the efforts. So what's the problem? There's no problem. Many of us like to just do too fucking much. And that's what stresses us out. If we just focus on the, the important 20%, make that the most efficient. 80% of the results will be reflected in 20% of those efforts. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? That's great. I think that's great. I get a lot done by focusing on just 20% of my efforts. Everything else that I can't control, see we we we're, we're combining a lot of these um we're combining a lot of these philosophies now. We got the 80/20 principle, we got the philosophy of incremental improvement, Kaizen, and we have stoicism. Right? Stoicism is built on the dichotomy of control, which is focus on what you can control and not on what you can't control. Kaizen method is focusing on incremental improvement. The Pareto principle or the 80-20 principle is focusing on 20% of the efforts to yield 80% of the results. So we see in life when we take the path of least resistance, when we take the path of least effort, guess what? We get more things done. We can even throw the, the Tao in there. Right? The Tao says that pretty much nothing has to be done and everything is achieved at the same time. Right? Just paraphrasing. That's that's pretty much what it's built on. So I'm just gonna read some of the main points from the book, right? Specifically, the 80-20 principle suggests that higher productivity in any activity will be achieved by 
celebrating and expanding exceptional performance rather than trying to raise the overall average. See, when you focus on your performance and you you work on what's going right and you make that more efficient, you make that more of a well-oiled machine, you're going to inevitably expand your results. I don't I'm 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 not but since I've been reading this for like 9 years or I've been aware of this principle and practicing it for about nine years. I'm not really too sure how to just raise the overall average with brute force. Like I wouldn't know how to do that. That's not something that appeals to me. That's not something I really care about. My mind at this point is focused, is focused on expanding performance, just focusing on what works and keep doubling and just double down on it. I use that in, marketing i'm learning marketing right now as you can see and i do a little market testing right i test a few things some content that i like right i I have i like a whole bunch of things by the way and i post it post some stuff right put some stuff out and i watch everybody's reaction to it if people happen to like it then i just keep on going in depth with that same content right Rather than trying to focus on expanding the overall message and getting more people and figuring out multiple pieces of content that people like, I just, I just try to focus on maybe one, two, or just 20% of the content that I'm interested in posting. I just focus on the one, two, three um, nuanced pieces of content that I like and the audience likes and that's how i came to start talking about these type of topics right personal development who doesn't like personal development who doesn't like to develop themselves right and then i like to focus on specific hard um hard uh principles because a lot of people think personal development is woo and it's this and that and i agree i think a lot of personal development is just a lot of motivational crap that people who made it are divorced from how they made it in the first place so they just spew some motivational crap but i'm in the thick of it right now i'm still working towards my goals i'm having fun while i'm doing it as well and i'm sharing the things that i've learned and still learning along the journey i got a lot a lot like i have a lot of things to share with you guys in the way of practical um strength uh strength (laughs) practical um personal development right strength training too as well that's a that's a practical tactic or strategy to developing personally right so the next point is looking for productive shortcuts that still achieve 80 percent of the intended results rather than plotting on okay so i don't really like that word shortcut because i don't believe in shortcuts but the main idea is to look for ways to 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 be efficient in receiving 80 percent of the intended results rather than just you know just randomly you know figuring out what works and what doesn't work you know you look for that little shortcut and you just you just keep on hammering that so i saw a quote the other day that perfectly describes this and i'm gonna paraphrase it because i don't know the exact quote It's better to chop down a tree with a sharp axe than with a with a dull knife or some shit like that. Or it's better to 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 cut down a tree with one swing of a sharp axe than a a dull uh, or swinging at it 10 times with a dull with a dull axe. (laughs) <laughs> 10,000 times with a dull axe. I believe that's the uh that's the quote. I completely butchered that shit, right? So that's the idea. You want to sharpen your tools so that you can minimize the amount of times that you swing at the tree, right? You want to make sure that you are exerting the least amount of effort and maximizing your results, right? I'm going to have to look that quote up (laughs) because I'm really interested in what it actually said. But the concept is the concept still stands. So next point is using the least possible effort to maintain control over your life rather than making things difficult for yourself. See, that's what we're talking about. 
we don't want to do too much. Why are we trying to do too much? I think that we're here to have a good time, right? We're not here. Well, we're here to have a good time, learn things and what have you. Or I could be completely wrong. That's what I think we're here for. I think we're here for evolution and we do it through, I think, through play. Right. That's why I like to have this jovial attitude. I don't really take many things seriously besides, um, you know, the everyday housekeeping stuff in my life and the people I love's life and stuff like that. Right. So the least possible effort to maintain control over your life. What is that? Conscientiousness. I always like to talk about one of the ocean traits of conscientiousness. When you can focus on conscientiousness, such as putting your stuff away, not living in a messy environment, not living in a messy home or not working in a messy environment or a messy home or whatever the case may be, you increase your conscientiousness and therefore lower your neuroticism. You're able to see things clearly and therefore you make your life easier. If you can't see things clearly, Clearly, what are you going to do? You're going to be walking around. It's like you're going to be walking around in a dark room, bumping into stuff, trying to get everything right. No, if you just focus on just keeping everything neat, tidy, clean, you'll make better choices, more efficient choices. And it's going to lead to better results in your overall life. You know, many people worry about the wrong things. Or focus on the wrong things. Or focus on things that's not necessarily priority. When they could be focusing on the conscientious aspects of their life. Which will lead to betterment in the other aspects that they prioritize over conscientiousness. Right? This this is what makes life easier. For example, I like to focus on my mental health. I think everybody should focus on their mental health. Just as much as they focus on their physical health. I don't for the life of me understand why people focus on their physical health. They they brush their teeth every day. They take a shower every day, hopefully. And what is that? Oh, somebody's in the background. If you hear that, somebody's doing some work in the background. That were right outside. But um, people focus on brushing their teeth, taking a shower, I hope. And they don't focus on... The mental health and hygiene. They don't focus on taking a deep breath, right? Taking a deep breath is real important to maintaining maintaining an equilibrium of mind, of their mind, right? Some people walk around haphazardly all day and they never just take a deep fucking breath, right? And like I was saying before, I like to take care of my mental health, go to the gym, exercise, read books, keep me at a calm default and everything else springs from that default everything springs from that void from that area of zero right i call it the area of zero when you're at zero and you're calm and you're and you're serene and you can just amplify that serenity as much as possible then everything else springs from that so mental health that could be could be 10 percent Right. You know, your, your environment, that could be another 10 percent. And through that 20 percent, everything else springs from it. Mental, you have mental, you have mental health, mental clarity, and you can make better, better decisions. And you're more relaxed. You're not running around all neurotic because you're focused on the conscientiousness aspect of your personality trait. Right. Of the ocean traits. And you're able to build from that. You, you're able to build your life on organization in detail and having sound mental health when you can help it right if you're if you're subclinically anxious or depressed these are some things that can help you if you think that you may be just putting a disclaimer out there if you think that you might have severe depression severe anxiety definitely seek help from a professional because With the advent of all of this mental health um, awareness going on now, which is good, which I I love, people always have to do too much. People go too much with the mental health awareness advocacy and mental hygiene advocacy 
when they tried to tell people who are legitimately clinically depressed that they need to just think positive thoughts. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I don't believe it works that way at all whatsoever. I think some people or many people are born differently and they just need they, they have some challenges and they need to to get some help to to help them navigate their life. Right. And I think in some cases, it's not necessarily that people have a disorder because disorder, when you think about what a disorder is, it's a malalignment with what society deems normal or orderly. Right. A disorder is out of alignment with that so-called norm, quote unquote. Right. So I think people just need a little bit of guidance towards a lifestyle that works for them for many people for example many people cannot work in corporate america because their minds are just not built that way people that are typically anxious that i notice they might be just creative they might not fit into a cubicle they might need to be more expansive and and create and maybe that's not a clinical issue. Maybe that's maybe it could, it could it, maybe it starts off as a clinical issue. But when they get the the proper guidance, they realize, oh, maybe I just need to go and create. Maybe I don't need to live in a busy city, right? So yeah, we're getting again, we're getting a little sidetracked. See, I went to the I went the mental health route, right? But mental health is definitely a good place to focus on when you're trying to yield. A strong 80% of results in your life, right? So here's another, this, this is the last point I'm going to make about this in a, in a general, very general sense. Outsourcing as many non-productive tasks as possible to other people so you can focus on where you are highly productive. Business owners that are micromanagers, you guys need to cut it out. You guys need to cut it out. I see a lot of... I've known a lot of business owners that are super, uh, super neurotic with it. Like this super, they act like middle management. If you are an owner, if you're an owner, you can't act like middle management. You can't, you got to let middle management handle that. You got to let middle management handle that. And your, your frontline people handle all of that. All of the non-productive tasks that you deem non-productive or non-productive because non-productive is from your perspective if you are in the business owner aspect you shouldn't be doing the um maybe the sales people work right that's non-productive from your perspective right i don't know much about business but i do know that much if you are the owner you shouldn't be doing sales if you have people that can do sales for you or any other administrative if if, if they have if you have administrative roles administrative stuff you should relegate to administrative staff getting tongue-tied out here right so um so now we're going to focus on some of the key points i'm just going through this book all right i'm just going to read um boom gonna go to another key point here we go The 80-20 principle states that there is an inbuilt imbalance between inputs and results in any system. See, that's speaking to inefficiency. We all, this is always going to be some type of inefficiency. Like I brought up the example before in one of these other podcasts, when I was an engineering major, I learned about inefficiency in like engines, for example. Engines are not 100% efficient because we can evidently see that because they give off heat. Something that doesn't give off heat, the like engine that doesn't give off heat, that seems to be 100% efficient. And I think those probably exist, maybe doesn't exist. If it does, it's super expensive. But let's continue. Typically, the majority of the inputs have little impact on the results, while a minority have a major impact. In other words, the bulk of the results are actually derived from only a small portion of the imp- inputs. So this is reiterating the 80-20 principle, the imbalance. Try to find the 20 percent that is effective and just and just and just focus on that the other 80 percent of the efforts leave that alone but you want to focus on the 20 percent of the efforts and then focus on 80 percent of the results that you want right a mathematical benchmark which consistently shows up is that 80 percent of the results directly flow from 20 percent of the efforts therefore the key 
to being more productive is determine which 20% of the total effort is most productive. We spoke about that. Find ways to make the 80% that is currently unproductive become more productive. Uh, I don't really agree with that. I just really, mm, I, fo- I, I feel like we should just focus on the, the 20% because you, 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 you can't, you're going to go into a point where you just can't fully get all of the product the productivity out of that 80 percent as well i mean or maybe maybe there's a compounding effect that will go on there hmm. i don't know i never thought of it that way hmm. so the top 10 businesses business applications of the 80 20 principle are strategies a strategy quality cost reduction and service improvement marketing as i mentioned earlier selling IT, information technology, decision making and analysis, inventory management, project management, negotiation. Okay, so here's some personal applications that applies to you, to us, really. Key areas in which 8020 thinking can be applied to personal lives are time management, setting personal goals, forming personal and professional friendships, making career choices, making more money. Developing the personal habits of success. Okay. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. That's all I want to talk about with the um, the 80-20 principle. It's not much much else to really know about it. You just know that there's an inbuilt balance between the amount of um, productivity that comes from 100% of the efforts. You know that there's just going to be a 20% that, that is going to bleed to 80% of the results. You just got to figure out how to, where that 20% is and how you can make it more productive. How can you get better at it? I say, use the, 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 use the principle of incremental improvement to just incrementally improve that 20% every day when you can and where you can. And you will see that the 80%, 80% of a hundred percent of the results, 80% of the results will continuously improve over time right so that's pretty much all i want to talk about for that the next topic we're going to get into is bullying so i will see you in the next segment I don't know if you guys can hear that but i think they're working on something downstairs or outside or something like that so if you can hear that in the background please excuse me i'll try not to get sidetracked from the noise so oh remember if you made it this far if you made it this far subscribe leave a five-star rating on um apple Podcasts or wherever and also comment if you're listening to this on youtube just the support like comment and all that good stuff notification hit the notification bell all that good stuff because we're going to keep on getting into some of these deep topics these taboo topics these superficial topics every now and again we go a little superficial i'd say that this one this topic is taboo i don't think many people are I think people are talking about it, but they're talking about it in a very superficial and a very unproductive way. See, the last the last segment, we was talking about productivity. Right. And I think that a lot of people are talking about bullying in a very unproductive way. What sparked this thought was being on Twitter about an hour ago and seeing somebody retweet one of their one of their siblings being bullied. Right. And. And my perspective of this is coming from I'm and I'm 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 sounding like an old man now. I'm 32 years old. And I'm from the Bronx. And not from the greatest neighbor greatest of neighborhoods or the greatest of, of boroughs, right? Charlemagne said that all crazy people supposedly supposedly come from the Bronx and all of Florida, right? That's what that's what he says. But I think they come from all of Florida. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on in the Bronx, right? So, 
but I still love my hometown. But in the Bronx, the thing with bullying is that when you try to avoid being bullied, you just got bullied even more. So I had to, of course, I had to learn that the hard way growing up. But then got to a point where I actually loved fighting. I learned how to fight and then I loved fighting. And then what I noticed is that when you stand up for yourself, people don't want to fuck with you as much. Right. Or at least from the childhood standpoint, people are not going to fuck with you. if They know that you're going to fight. If you're going to swing back. See, bullies are fucking cowards. Simple as that. They don't fuck with people that can defend themselves. So that's what my opinion is predicated on. No, I don't think that violence is the answer. No, I don't think that. I don't think that. I'm not saying that violence is the answer because violence is not the answer. But defending yourself is the answer. If someone wants to violate you, if somebody wants to do you harm, are you not going to defend yourself? So why not teach your kids to defend themselves? The problem I see in a lot of this society now, and it's weird. It's very weird. A lot of weirdos out there that think that we can tell the world how to behave. Yeah, the world needs to stop being violent. The world needs to stop doing this. Or, no, we need to tell kids to stop doing this. And we need to create safe spaces. Listen, I agree with the sentiment, but that's just not how the world is right now. Right now. It's not that way right now maybe in the future but currently currently if your kid is getting beat up at school and the school is doing nothing about it this is in the cases where the school is doing nothing about it by the way if the if the school is doing nothing about it then you need to teach your child to defend themselves take them to self-defense classes or go on youtube teach them how to defend themselves not teach them how to love violence but to defend themselves it's a difference. If somebody's attacking your child, your child needs to know how to defend themselves. My older sister made sure that I knew how to defend myself when I was younger. And it's funny because, and a lot of you could probably feel me on this, but my sister was on some shit where she's like, yo, if I ever find out that you lose a fight, then I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> you know, you, you know, somebody, how it used to be was if you got picked on at school, and you come home and you tell maybe older sibling or your parents that, you know, you got picked on and you don't defend yourself. Guess what? You're going to have a problem with them. Because that's not cool. You got to it's that's that's basic self-preservation. Yeah, basic self-preservation. It seems like we're being taught not to preserve ourselves these days. Right. It's just. I don't know. Why is it that a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of parents are trying to get the schools to do something about it when they clearly don't want to do anything about it? And then furthermore, let's step outside the school. What happens when you get away from the school? There's nothing stopping the bully from stalking and continuously preying on people that they perceive or children that they perceive is weaker than them. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. What do you what would you rather have? Would you rather have a bully continuously beating up on your kid every single day? Or would you have would you rather have your child be able to defend themselves at all at all times? And here's the thing. One one kid could bully your kid and you can go talk to the parents. You can go talk to the school and then you, you solve that problem. You're, OK, even if that bully say if that bully even stops bullying your kid, that one bully. What about all the other bullies? You want to instill empowerment in your child from the get-go so that people can have that aura that so that they can have that aura and people will get the message not to fuck with them yeah now people what people are going to fuck with them there's always going to be some troublemakers in the world right but that 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 proves a point even more not even proves but extends my point even more when i say that there's nothing you can really do about bullies except defend yourself when when you can simple as that I see so many butthurt social media um, people 
always say, oh, but but it's the bullies. It's the bullies fault. It's the bullies fault. Of course, it's the bullies fault. No shit. It's the bullies fault. Of course it is. But when you sit there and try to place your life and your safety in someone else's hands, that's what's going to happen. You're going to continue to have your child bullied or your sibling bullied. That is just straight up common sense. Like that's not something that's rocket science. And I think it's just that we live in this this, this world where, again, this, this weird old world, this weird old time we live in where people think that, where people really think that they can take their perspective on the world and just blanket it all across the world and think that that's just how it is. Let's create, this is a safe space. Let's create a safe space. Yeah, I would, I would, I would love, who wouldn't want a safe space where they can express themselves, where they can be themselves and all that stuff. But that's just not, that's not where we're at right now. It's not where we're at. We're getting more, we're getting more tolerant at least, and we're getting more aware at least but we're not there yet, and is and and until we're there, your child is gonna have to learn to defend themselves. Your your little brother's gonna have to learn to defend himself. Your little sister's gonna learn to defend them. Gonna have to learn to defend themselves. And how about people stop fucking recording shit when people get bullied and step in? How about that shit? We we're we're standing around recording when somebody's getting fucked up or when somebody's getting bullied. If it's a one on one fight, yo, I'm all about. Hey, look, if it's a one on one fight and people are recording. I don't have no problem with that. I think that people should be able to express themselves like that, straight up. If if two people, you're not going to stop people from fighting. You're not going to stop people from fighting, ever, ever. We've been fighting since, I don't know, since the dawn of man. Been fighting since then. Since we learned to freaking gather things, hunt and gather and and, and, and have boundaries. I would say since then, that's when we started having wars and fights and all this shit and battling for resources. Yo, that shit is built into us. The aggression is built into our DNA. And you telling your child, don't, don't, hit, don't hit the Mac. Violence is not the answer, little Johnny. Guess what? Little Johnny's going to get beat up every single day until they learn to defend themselves. I know I had to. I had to fucking learn to defend myself. And the minute I learned how to defend myself, whoo. Had one fight after that, and then, shit, can't remember the last time I fought since then. And it was a dude that was bigger than me, too. Dude thought that he could, dude thought that he could just, because I was always a skinny, so skinny, skinny person, but I learned how to fight, learned how to throw them fucking hands, <laughs> learned how to box, and yeah, man, shit, shit changed from there. Shit changed from the dude was like six feet. I was five seven at the time. Was not very, like what one forty, and I held my own. His friends had to fucking pull me off of him. Held my own. Not bragging about it because I'm not, not too proud of those 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 days. But the point is that even if your child is smaller than a bully, they learn how to defend themselves. Hit the hit the bully in the right spot, right? Get a nice little one two combination going. You know, one to the gut, one to the head, boom, bing, bong. You know, they good. You know what I'm saying? That's it. See, the Bronx is coming out of me. They, they good either way, though. You know, but you can't, you can't just coddle your kids in the participation trophies. That's another thing. Everybody wins. No, everybody does not win. That's no. Everybody does not win. Everybody does not win, and that's gonna lead. To even more depression because these kids are not going to be able to know what it feels like to strive towards something, earn it, and win, and, and be on top. And it's not, there's nothing wrong with being on top. There's nothing wrong with winning. There's nothing wrong with losing either. When you lose, you learn from, you learn from your mistakes. Right? That's similar to what we just talked about in the last segment. Right. Eighty percent of the results come from 20 percent of the efforts. So you got to figure out how to make that 20 percent much more efficient so that you can win. Simple as that. 
you know, stop, stop getting, you know what, people are never not going to stop doing it, but it's just nice to talk about it. Stop getting on social media telling people that they need to stop, they need to, they need to stop bullying people or we need to tell the bullies to stop. Like, stop doing that. Like, how, how long, how long is that going to, how long is it going to take to actually get bullies to stop bullying? How long is it going to take? How long do you think it's going to take? What is it going to take? Teach these kids to defend themselves, man. Like, and, and man, it's crazy, 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 crazy. Self-defense is like, like you really, you are really making yourself a hard target when you can defend yourself. And that gets into the, the whole gun laws thing too. The gun, not gun laws, but gun ownership as well we can get into that as well we can get into that as well you know but i'm not even going to get into that too much because i'm not a gun owner yet not a gun owner yet but yeah that's pretty much all i had to say about that you know just the the, there's it's a real and i know it's a it's a it's a it's a rude awakening when you go into the world and you see reality and i know a lot of you parents y'all don't want your kids getting beat up by some bullies so the first thing and maybe a lot of y'all weren't taught to defend yourselves either. Because ain't no way, ain't no way I'd let my kid get beat up. Ain't no way. Gonna have to learn to defend themselves. That's it. Simple as that. 100% learn to defend themselves. If they don't, then psh, shit, man. <laughs> Gotta learn to defend yourself. You know, and 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 it's not a good feeling kid comes home with a black eye they got fucked up and they don't they don't it's not a good feeling you it makes you angry right you want to go and call the school give them a piece of your mind no it doesn't work that way oh also another one another one that is very important teach your kids how to cut somebody's ass teach your kids how to roast someone Teach your kids about roast battles. Very important stuff. Like, you got to teach your kids to snap back. You got to teach your kids to clap back. <laughs> Man. So, roasting, if you don't know, or cutting ass, if you don't know, is when you're sitting down, mind your business, and somebody just starts making fun of you out of nowhere. What are you going to do? You're going to start crying? You gonna get mad? That's the, that's the the average person gets mad, or the average person gets starts crying, or the average child starts crying, getting nah, man. The savages, you gotta be a savage, straight up. You gotta be look at look at something. If they cutting your ass, yo, people used to roast my hair. I had this hairline. If I could show y'all when I do the video component, like when I I'm gonna get a camera in the next month or two two months. And we're gonna, you, you guys are gonna be able. I'm gonna record a, record a, a video version of the podcast while I'm recording the audio portion at the same time. But y'all gonna be able to see my features, right? And I had this hairline since I was born. Like this is the anarchy hairline, pretty much. It, only me and my dad has it. Have it really? It's crazy. But I've been getting my ass cut about my hair since forever. <laughs> But guess what? I used to clap back. Like, I used to cut ass right back. And if you go on my personal Instagram page, you'll probably see in a few of the comments where me and my mutuals, uh, excuse me, me and my mutuals are cutting ass and all that stuff. But it's died down since everybody gets so offended easily nowadays. Everybody gets so easily offended nowadays. But you got to teach a kid to clap back. You got to teach a kid to roast somebody. And you got to practice with them. Teach them to have thick skin. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't understand it. I don't understand. What happened? What happened? When did everybody get so easily offended? I don't get it. I don't get it. You can say the, you can say the littlest thing and people find something about that statement to get offended by it they'll nitpick i'll tell people straight up i don't give a fuck if you're offended 
I don't care if you're offended. Like I stay in my own little corner in general, but somebody comes comes at me or comes for me, I'm gonna cut their ass. Like that's what you need to be doing. You need to be teaching your kids that same thing. If somebody tries to come up to them in school and try to bully, and that's where the bullying probably starts too. They try to test in little ways, like, oh, they can make a little comment here and there. I still get that still to this day. People will come up to me and try to like say a little joke here and there and think I'm not gonna cut then I cut back and then they oh they back the fuck up. But if you don't have boundaries, you don't defend yourself. That's gonna that's basically telling them, yeah, 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 I'm gonna abuse them. Especially narcissist. You are grooming your child to be a victim of a narcissist. If you don't teach them how to learn to cut back, roast people back when they insult them, and you can insult them back. You could choose to insult them back or you could choose to be not insulted. But I think as a child, you don't have the 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 the, the emotional maturity to go to to have to um, internalize stoic wisdom and say, "Oh, you insulted me. I choose not to be insulted." No, you gotta cut back until one day you realize, "Huh, all that cutting shit is for the birds." Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta teach them to cut back. You gotta teach them to roast back, because that's when the bully just thinks, "Okay, this is this is good." I can get away with this. I can keep on saying this and then it starts to escalate. Then it starts with the hitting, right? It starts with the, the violence and all that shit, right? No, teach them to cut back. And if the bully wants to get offended because they got roasted back, yo, they can catch these hands. Simple as that. Simple as that. But the, the main thing I'm saying here, I'm not saying violence is the answer. And I'm not saying that you should insult people out of nowhere. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you should teach your kids to defend themselves. I would even, I should have preferenced this, but I'm going to put a, uh, a disclaimer. I would also advise, yeah, walking away or attempting to walk away. Right? Attempt to walk away. The next time, if they, if the bully is still trying to fuck with them and you still can't walk away, you still, I would say never turn your back. Just try to walk away. It's whatever, right? If that doesn't work, y'all be ready to defend yourself. If they want to cut ass, you cut back. Simple as that. Growing up, that's what we had to do too. Cut ass. I'm sounding old here. But we learn to cut ass. We learn to roast. We learn to get back and clap back. Right? Go on to YouTube videos. There's so many videos of people cutting somebody ass. <laughs> man, oh man. This was a fun podcast. This one was fun. I feel I just feel very strongly about standing up for yourself. You know feel very strongly about standing up for yourself and you know like i said i still get it to this day people try to people try to come for me too then they get mad when i cut them when i cut them back and they just they're getting their feelings they're getting their feelings but that's pretty much that you know stop 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 being offended um stop teaching your kids to be offended have thick skin and teach your kids to have thick skin too it's weird to get offended at every little thing. You know, if somebody if somebody tries to insult your family, your friends, your mother, your father, whoever, that's totally understandable and that is offensive. Totally is offensive. It is. But what, you're going to let people rule you through your emotions? Hmm? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you leave a five-star rating in any of the platforms that you might be listening to this on. But I see that most of my listeners, and thank you for listening. It's crazy. It's crazy. You guys are really listening. Most of my listeners are on Apple Podcasts. They listen on Apple Podcasts. You guys listen on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe. Leave a five-star rating. These are very fun. I love getting up on here and talking shit. <laughs> I love getting up on here and talking shit. And I still got to make some type of way for you guys to communicate back with me because, yeah, it's fun. But I get a lot of I get a lot of my topics from personal conversations that I have with you guys anyway. So that's good. You guys are actually driving this podcast a lot easier than I thought it would be. And making a podcast is super easy. If you want to make a podcast, stop fronting. Stop fronting and make. I know a few of you that are listening 
would do great if you make a podcast. Who cares? Yo, the first thing people like to think about is, oh, the market is saturated or it's that the next. So focusing on what other people are doing. Yo, if you have a message and you want to talk about your message and you want to get your message out there and you want to share it, even if it's with one listener, even if it's with one listener, do it. Do it for you because there's there's a high probability that there are some people out there or there are a lot of people out there that care about the same things that you care about. If that's what you want, if you really want a listenership, just understand that there's a lot of people out there that care about the same thing you care about. And the sad thing about it is that a lot of people are sitting there wanting to do a podcast, wanting to start a YouTube channel, wanting to, to put their message out there, but they don't do it because they're scared and they care about what other people are going to say about what they're doing. They're scared that people are going to tell them, oh, what are you trying to do? Oh, you're trying to be an entrepreneur now. Oh, what are you trying to do? You're trying to be one of these cheesy people. Nah, man. Yo, put your message out there. You know, social media. Like, if you see the front screen of my um phone, you see all the goddamn apps. I'm on all the apps, all the social media apps. I like I like social media, right? And I like social media because it allows for me to express my creativity in ways that I didn't find easy to express when I was younger. I wasn't the most expressive person when I was younger. That could be because of maturity, but it also it's also because, well, I'll put it this way. It's a lot easier for me to express myself now that we have all of these, these tools that encourage you to express yourself. There's so many tools. There's so many tools. And if you want to know how to make a podcast, if you want to know how to do the artwork, how I set everything up, hit me up. I'll tell you how to do it. And I think, yo, there are a lot of people in my DMs that I talk to on a regular basis that I think should make a podcast. Some are very funny. I think some are very funny. We'll make, a, <laughs> we'll make some really good podcasts because y'all be cracking me up. You guys be cracking me the fuck up. Like, I be laying there looking at my DMs, looking at some of the memes that you guys be posting. Some of the memes that you guys be sending me, too. It's funny as fuck. Also, the memes that you see on my personal page, yeah, a lot of it is from me. But a lot of a lot of people be sending me these memes. So don't get mad. If you see a meme up there that you don't like, just know that it may or may not have been encouraged by me. I posted it, yeah. But it's more, it's, there's a chance that one of, one of my followers sent it to me so that I could post it. So I will post it because I love you guys. You guys are cool as shit. And um, ex- with the exception of one or two of you that are weird and get offended by, like, I post corny shit. I post some corny stuff. Like, that's the weird thing about this era we're living in, like. I could post some corny shit and there's always one person, one person that gets offended by the corny shit that I post. And if you look at my, my shit's pretty much wholesome with the exception of the future memes. I love, I love, yo, I fucks with future. I love his music. A lot of people, a lot of you people might not like that, but I don't give a fuck what you think. A lot of you people, you have have an issue with future for whatever reason, like, you know, the fucking guy and want to judge him and think that. Like, I don't understand why you guys judge this man. Y'all don't even know him. I don't know him. Y'all don't give a fuck about him. Y'all say that he's a bad representation of a of a black man and all this bullshit. And I'm just like, wait, what? But whatever, man. It's funny. You guys are allowed to express your opinions. But either way, um, yeah. Anyway, I think you guys, you want to do something, go ahead and do it. Like, stop bullshit. And no one gives a fuck, though. Like, no one cares. Those are just thoughts in your mind when you tell yourself, hey, yeah, people are not going to like it or people are going to tell me I'm being corny or people are going to make fun of me for wanting to put out a message. Who gives a fuck? Go after what you want and have fun while you're doing it. That's the most important thing. Make sure it's something that you actually want to do. Have fun doing it. I think personally, I got the radio gene for my dad. Might. Might might have might have got the radio gene from my dad um we both like to run our fucking mouths those of you who know who my dad is he likes to run his mouth <laughs> but um yeah that's pretty much that uh, that's all i'm gonna that's all i'm gonna put out there for today 
on the podcast go ahead and uh go ahead and subscribe again like leave us five star rating because this is a five star podcast this shit's shit's fire shit's fire but anyway i'll talk to you guys next time thank you so much for listening peace Thank you.